This is a media server. Yeah, this is a green hippo grasshopper. And obviously we've got it connected to two monitors at the moment. But in the real world, you can plug this into other kinds of the display devices. So you can use it with projection or LED screens or LCD, or you can pixel map from the output. Yep. Now there's a whole bunch of different connection options. You know. At the moment, as you can see, we've actually got the output of the camera we're shooting this review on fed into the front of the unit, and we're using that as one of the layers, which is being superimposed on the output. Basically, the system runs in two parts. There's the actual server component, which is running in here. That's the Hippotizer engine. Um, that's what manages all of the playback and the layering and all that sort of thing. And then there's a the Zookeeper software, and that can actually be run on an external machine. We're running it on the same machine here, so it's a little bit laggy on the actual video, like the user interface, but the output is very smooth. And to me, I'd rather have a smooth output than a, a laggy output and a great user interface. Uh, I think if you ran it on an external machine, it would be less of an issue. So you can plug external video sources in. You can use any of the internal media. There's a mm. whole bunch of media arranged into folders and, and you can see thumbnails within all the folders and so Where on. Where does one purchase media for things like this if you need some sort of stock vision? There, there's a bunch of resources online, um, uh, whether it's sort of one of the, the jump pack style things. Um, there, there is a lot of media online, but there's a lot of media that comes with this. Right. You know, and you can get virtual gobos and things like that. Um, the other thing you can do is that there's a little utility you can run on other computers that are connected to the same Ethernet network as the, the actual grasshopper, mm -hmm. uh, and that allows you to import the vision from those computers, or whatever those computers are displaying, you can bring in as a layer. now. The server component's configurable into you know sort of two or four or eight different layers. We've got it running in four layer mode here, as you can see. Yeah. And you've got different options to be able to mix and blend those. You know, you can do multiply or you can do keying or mat uh, overlays and things like that. You can mix each layer a certain amount. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a whole bunch of other things you can do on a layer by layer basis as well as on the output. So you can change your know, keystone or aspect, things like that. You can make color adjustments. You can apply two different effects parameters to each layer. And then on top of all of that, you can do things on the master output like masking or pixel mapping or uh, video mapping. Um, so th there, there are a lot of different ways you can implement this thing. Now the one thing you can't do is record the output. Mm -hmm. um, look, for me that's not really that's not really a huge thing. This is really a live device. Why would you want to record the output anyway? Well, that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's, it's really it's a, it's it's a, a stack live of device, cues, right? It's, you're firing off clips and packages. Yeah, and you're firing off clips and things like that. And and the important thing to know there is that there's a couple of ways that can happen too. You can either manually do it via the interface, mm. or you can save presets, and then you can use DMX value inputs to trigger things on the actual system. So you know, it's got Ethernet ports, obviously, and the thing can pick up on ArtNet coming in. It can also spit ArtNet out to feed either ArtNet devices or an ArtNet to DMX bridge for your pixel mapping and so on. So you can actually pre-program your whole show, get all your looks sorted out, maybe make some minor tweaks when you get into a venue to suit your projection surface or whatever, but then you can park this under the desk somewhere you know, I have the monitor there, have the keyboard, but you're probably not going to need it because if you do it right, you can actually trigger all your stuff that happens in this mm. as part of your lighting queue yeah, setup. And I think that's where this is really yeah, cool. That, that's how I'm going to use it. Yeah. And look, it's not, uh, for me, I think the, the best value is going to be had by people who have this on, on a long tour mm. um, in a situation where you maybe got a production rehearsal and you've got time to go through. And, and if you spend some time really finessing your content, you can make some beautiful results with mm. this. Mm. Very good. Yeah, it is.